Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Jamie Photography. Um, today I'm going to do a day to night and I love little country churches here in England. Uh, I'm fascinated by the uh, by the architecture and, and the age of some of these buildings. So this is um, Utterling, U-T-L-I-N-G, Utterling Church uh, in Essex in England and um, built in the uh, 14th century and uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to take this morning shot I was here before dawn and as you can see it's a th it's a 30th of a second f8 ISO 640 so we we're just before the blue hour really um, gray sky uh, quite often the case when we go out to shoot something frosty morning um, so what I'd like to try to do is is give this photograph some energy make it pop um, give it some drama so we're going to do a sky replacement because we have a gray sky and uh, we're going to do a little bit of day tonight as well on the church to to make it look a little bit more interesting so um so let's get started um, the first things i'm i always do is i look to check my perspective and my crop so i'm going to go down down here to transform and uh, I'm going to click auto just to see how it does with auto. Not too bad, actually. Um, I think this spiral needs to be a little bit more vertical. So I'm still in auto. I'm going to go to the vertical slider and I'm just going to slide that slightly to the left. And what you'll see as I go back to where I was at zero, you can see that it just brings the tower a little bit more vertical. Um, and the reason why we have that is because this is 16 mil. Um, lens here 16 to 35 uh, Sony lens and this was shot on my Sony a7r 4 so we 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 have 61 megapixels to play with which is which is must a lot of fun so that 16 millimeter lens does create a little bit of distortion and we can correct that using the transform functions particularly that vertical helps helps a great deal I might even take it back just a little bit I don't want the cross on the top of the tower too close to the to the top of the image so um so then I'm going to go up to the crop tool here. I'm going to click on the crop tool and uh, I'm just going to bring the bottom up just a little bit, just to give it a little balance and just take out those white pieces now that have appeared in the bottom left and right corner because we uh, corrected the, uh, the vertical. So I'm going to hit enter. So that's the image I'm going to work with. Now we're going to do a couple of, a couple of corrections here, not, not too much. And we're going to add a little bit of, um, depth to the image by giving a little bit of contrast to the church before we go into um, Photoshop to remove um, some bits and pieces in this image and um, and I'm probably going to do the sky replacement because there's a lot of trees here a lot of little branches uh, Photoshop isn't the best at dealing with that so I'm probably going to use Luminar uh, to do the sky replacement so let's just uh, go up to the basic functions here I'm going to, um, to bring down the highlights just a little bit, not too much. I'm going to open up the shadows again, just a little bit. Again, not too much there. Um, and I'm going to go to my, my whites. And uh, if you do the normal, press Option or Alt key and slide it until you get the whites. So go back just before you get the whites. You'll end up with a huge amount of contrast, very bright sky. And sky replacements work better with a grey sky, so a neutral sky. If you have a very bright white sky, actually you'll struggle to get the detail in and around the trees because the fall off into the branches of the sky is quite high. So the difference between the light, the light within the tree areas of the sky and the brightest area of the sky is too big a contrast and you'll find that sky replacement tends to struggle there. So I'm not going to go anything like as high. I'm probably going to go about plus 10 with, with the whites. And with the blacks, again, I'll hold down the optional alt key and move the slider. And as you can see, there's already some blacks showing there. So just going to not go too deep. Come out actually a positive there about plus 15 just to uh, just to see. Yeah, that, that's working very well. So what, what I, I, I really do want to do is add a little bit more interest on the church here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into masks up here in the toolbar. And I'm going to go to my favorite tool, Radial Gradient. And I'm going to pull a couple of Radial Gradients out on the side of the church. I'm just going to turn them a little bit. So we're going to try to brighten this corner a little bit. 
just pulling that in there just moving it around just to get on this corner and I'm just going to bring the exposure up just a little bit not too much and I'm going to add just a little bit of warmth to that again not too much um, so we've got a little bit of contrast now between this corner and this part of the walk in fact I could probably open that up just a little bit more I'm going to right click on this one and duplicate the mask here and I'm going to pull this down over here to this part maybe make it a little bit narrower bring it down and um, I think that's probably okay there maybe a little bit narrower there and I'm also going to do one more right click duplicate the mask and I'm just going to bring something over to the entrance to the church here now what I do want to do having done those three you see we've got light on the grass and we and the sky will be slightly brighter as well so one of the things I will want to do from these each of these masks is I'm clicking on there I'm just going to subtract the sky select sky and what that will do is it will just remove the sky element from there and I'm also going to subtract a brush and I'm going to take a brush with quite a small feather um, and 100% flow so let's go about 30% feather and I'm just going to go around the bottom there and just take out that mask where it is on the grass. I'll click over to this one. I'll do the same thing. Subtract the sky. So up here, this bit will, will disappear. And I'm also going to subtract a brush. Those settings will stay from where we were. So 30 and 100%. And again, I'm just going to wash in there and take out that little bit where it was highlighted on the grass there. Last one, go back to the first one there, subtract the sky. So anything that's at the top there will be taken away. And then I'm also going to subtract a brush. And same thing, I'm just going to come in there and just take away that little bit that's on the grass. So a little bit more interest in there. That one's probably a bit bright. And also I did note there that um, there's some of the... Uh, radio at the bottom there so I'm going to click back on the brush for that one and just take that little bit away there so as you can see that's now gone so inside this particular tool here I'm just going to this, this radio filter here I'm just going to back that off a little bit uh, maybe add a little bit of clarity just to make it pop same with this end one here I think that's the right brightness but uh, I just want to add a little bit of clarity to that um, so I'm going to right click on this one going to duplicate this again and I'm thinking maybe we could have a little bit of light on the roof and I'm using that line that was uh, was shown from where we did the brush you can see that's uh, that's in there a little bit I can just rotate that just a tiny bit so uh, and then we can we can just go back into that particular mask go to the brush and just make sure that uh, we're not too bright on this end here and we've cut across there the sky is already removed because we duplicated the brush I'm just gonna bring that exposure down a little bit that's good I'm gonna right click I'm gonna duplicate it again this time I'm gonna take it over to the tower and uh, just gonna make it a little bit thinner straighten it up with the tower and I'm just gonna pop that in there so uh, looking at the mask you can see it does still come down so I'm gonna subtract the brush there and just take that across the bottom there so we've got the roof the roof illuminated this one's probably a little bit wide so it actually just gives us a little bit of interest into the sort of colors and the shapes along the the side of the building um, I'm going to create a new mask and I'm going to do another radial gradient and I, it looks a bit dark along this bottom edge here I'm just going to bring this in there and just bring that up just a little bit as you can see Add a little bit of warmth to it and a little bit of clarity it just gives us a little bit of detail along here now I think it looks looks pretty dark over on this this edge over here so I'm going to right click on this one duplicate the mask come over here we'll rotate that mask up and back as such just going to bring that across that corner there I don't want this piece over here uh, and I don't want too much on the grass there so I'm going to uh, subtract the sky initially so this bit's not too bright and then I'm going to subtract a brush I'm going to bring the flow to 50% and bring the feather up I want to, to sort of feather this away over here just just bring that in there like that 
and then I'm going to bring the feather right down, increase the flow to 100% and just ensure, make my brush a little bit smaller and just ensure that we're not lighting up that uh, the distant area there too much so just gonna just bring that in there so yeah that looks pretty good quite happy with that so I, I think there's a little bit of light over there that just needs to remove so I'm just going to go into the brush on that one as well and just take that that area over there smaller brush there we go you can make the brush bigger or smaller by wheeling your mouse or by using the square brackets which are to the left of the return key that will that will make your brush bigger or smaller I tend to just use the mouse to make it bigger or smaller as I'm working through okay so I'm happy with that I think what we're going to do now is pop over into Photoshop so we can remove this power cable uh, and some branches bits and pieces so I'm going to right click edit in and I'm going to edit in Adobe Photoshop 2023 so that will move across there we go open up into uh, into Photoshop which is good I'm just going to make it fit screen so we've got some some uh, branches in the top here and, and the top up here and there's a little bit of a branch on there and of course this power cable so let's deal with the uh, the branches first so um, the spot healing brush tool um, is a, a fantastic tool very very capable you can obtain it from the toolbar here on the left it looks like a little band-aid with a little line by it or, or you can just press J. So I'll select that. Um, again, if you want to make your brush bigger or smaller, you can use the square. In, in Photoshop, your wheelie mouse doesn't, doesn't do the uh, brush size. Um, you, you have to use the little square brackets to make it bigger or smaller. So I'm just going to take a reasonable size brush, this sort of size here, as you can see to the right of the church. And then I'm just going to paint over just where the, the areas are and it will remove those for me there's one there and the same over here on the left hand side that's tidied that up there's a quite a bright spot in the bottom left corner of that church I'm just going to take that out because it draws your attention the same on the wall here of the church there's a white quite a white area I'm just going to take that out now this power cable you could try to do it all in one go um, but what I, l I prefer to do I find that the the object remove function the heel function works better if you stay within the contrast so if I stay within the church and the roof here and I make my brush a little bit smaller I'm going to click where it starts I'm going to click on the joint between the roof and the wall but hold down the shift key before I click so it creates a, a straight line there we go and then I'm going to go where it starts on the roof go up to the edge of the roof just by the edge of the roof there and shift click and it will remove that bit and then the same for the roof so I'm now going to go to where it starts on the roof click once go to the edge of the tower just coming down that's it shift click and it will just remove it just gonna take that bit off the edge of the tower there now just gonna go across the tower so click shift click and it will remove it across there and then I'm just gonna do the same click shift click to the top and uh, get through there. there's a little bit on the edge now where you have an edge detail um, and I'll zoom in there so you can see you can see there's a little bit left there um, you just take a brush that's just slightly bigger than what it is and you just click there with the, the, the healing tool and it will compensate for the tile the tile position where the cable came across here it's not quite got it right just there so I'm going to try and just click on that joint there just to see and you see how that corrected the tile position um, just by clicking on it. it's very very clever so uh, I'm going to zoom back out there's a little bit of noise there uh, we'll deal with that later on so I think we we've got a picture ready to to have the sky put into it but I think we'll pop back into Lightroom and then we'll just correct the noise and then we'll, we'll do the sky replacement so so you go to file when you're in Photoshop you go to file you go to close you don't go to save as from the file menu you go to close and then you go to save and what that will do is it will pop it back into uh, into Lightroom and uh, there we go it's the the corrected version um, so we were we were there and uh, as a DNG with all of the the um, radial filters on it and we've moved over to there and uh, now it's a TIFF because it's been returned from from Photoshop 
So um, I think the next thing to do here is just, just have a look at the noise. So we're going to go back into the basic functions. We're going to go down to detail on the right hand side. And uh, I'm just going to zoom in uh, a little bit. And we're going to, let me just go to the menu. I'm going to select 400%. And, uh, oops, there we go. So you can see the noise in the sky. So we're really quite close, 400%. But I'm going to go half and half there. So you can see the sky. You can see the church uh, window here. See how much noise there is. We are zoomed at 400%. If we were at 100%, it would be less noticeable. And I'm going to go to the, illum the illuminance slider here, noise reduction. I'm just going to bring that up. Not too much. I'm going to go to 25. And you can see we've halved the noise in the sky already. And we've really improved um, the, 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 the window. So let's go a little bit further. Um, let's go to 35 and you know and that's as far as I'd want to go really um, we're going to do the sky replacement anyway but I don't want to go too far otherwise it tends to turn into a little bit of a comic look if we go too far but what I do like to do is offset the luminance with sharpening um, and uh, so generally my sharpening is more than my luminance so here I'm going to go to to 50% on sharpening now you can see the noise has returned so what we need to do is mask between the sharpening and the luminance and you'll find in the sharpening box there is a, ma a masking slider here if you hold down the option or alt key on windows um, and you click and start to slide as you slide you'll see that it, a black and white image appears the further you go uh, the more that you will see that um, black is where the luminance the noise reduction takes place and white is where the sharpening takes place so if I go all the way over to the right, you'll see that hardly anything is going to be sharpened, just the very edges. And if I go all the way to the left, you'll see that nothing is going to be um, have any noise reduction applied to it. So what we want to do is we want to get to where the sky becomes almost completely black. There we go. We don't want to go any further. And that means that we've got maximum. Um, it means we've got maximum noise reduction on the sky. And, uh, and and then there's a sort of blend of it on, on the church. So, um, you know, in fact, I might even bring that back just a little bit to about 45, just to make sure this doesn't look too bad here. Um, and, and I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to zoom back out. So, of course, we're very close there. Even if I go into 100%, you now can't see the noise at all. Um, and 100% is as close as you want to be anyway. So so that that's fine. So we, we've, got, we've dealt with the noise. We've got rid of all the objects. We've added a little bit of character to this church with some additional lighting, which looks a bit gimmicky at the moment, but you'll see you'll see how that, that comes together when we do the full day tonight. So the next thing I want to do is I, I want to put the sky in. And uh, in this case, because of the number of trees, as I said earlier, I, I will be lo using Luminar. So I'm going to right click. I have lo the Luminars as um, plugins for, for Lightroom and Photoshop, but... Now you might say, well, why don't you use Luminar Neo? Um, well, Luminar Neo does have slightly better advanced functions, uh, certainly for for some of the one-click um, functions that it offers, and also some of the sliders are a little bit more intelligent than they are in Luminar 4. But what I find with Luminar 4 is, is it leaves uh, me the opportunity to make more adjustments myself I'm not relying on the software to give me a one one click um, wonder in terms of uh, what it thinks is the right way to go I prefer to maintain a little bit of control uh, Neo does have its place and, and I have used it a number of times it's a very good piece of software but I actually prefer Luminar 4 for sky replacements so we'll edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments so there it is so we'll click edit it will open Luminar 4 with this uh, with this image. Here we go. So when we're in Luminar 4, um, they it's got four main main modules down on the right hand side. You you have your essentials, you have creative, you have portrait, and you have this professional um, um, tab. For sky replacement, um, I go into uh, creative. And then you get sky, AI sky replacement at the top here. So when you click on that, it opens up the uh, the basic module. If you click advanced, it opens up all the modules here. So you get that control I was talking about. You you get to uh, have a little bit more 
um, you know, more capabilities with the sliders. So I want to select the, the, the sky, so I'm going to go to sky selection and I click on that and what it's got, it's got all the sort of preset skies that come with Luminar are, are available there. There's a couple of additional ones I've added in there, but generally that's where it is. But I have my own collection of skies, so I go to load custom sky images. And what you'll find is, if I just close these up, is I've put them into, into folders. Now, I've got these skies from many different places. Um, there's a really good set of skies available from Serge Ramonelli. He has a fantastic set of skies, reasonably priced that you can download. They're, they're high quality. Um, there's also uh, a couple of other sites that, that do sell high quality skies as well. Um, so I, I tend to look around, but also I shoot my own skies. That's the other option as well. When you see that perfect sunset or that sunrise and you're in the middle of somewhere where there's nothing really to photograph except the sky, then move to a little bit of higher ground or move to an area where you're not going to get too much in your foreground and then just shoot the sky. Um, and then you've got it for later and you can use it. So uh, in night sky, um, these all these skies here are all skies that I've purchased and the ones above are the ones that I've done myself. So um, and what, one of the great things with, uh, with, with, with a Mac is, is that you can, whilst you're in a, 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 a sort of open module ready to open something, you can click on something and rather than trying to look at an icon, you can actually just hit, hit the space bar and it will actually open up the image for you. And if I move the down cursor, it will move to the next item down in the list and again same again same again so you can look at the images you've got so i like i like this one here number two so i'm just going to say come out of that using the either exiting out like i did there or just hitting the space bar so you can open it with space bar close it with the space bar to see which one is you, the one you want and this one here i'm going to go with that one so i'm going to click open and uh ai will will throw throw the sky in immediately into into the scene so this actual sky was taken in the southern hemisphere when I was in South Africa a couple of years ago uh, where the skies were extremely dark and actually you, you were able really to pull the detail out in the Milky Way. Um, there was a town in the distance and that's why there's a glow to the bottom right hand side but that town was, was almost a hundred miles away so that it was just a haze. Very You could hardly see it with the naked eye but when you do a, a one or two minute exposure um, at quite high ISO it's amazing how much light there actually is in the sky uh, and then you can pull that 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 comes out but it works quite well because of course in in a in a quite a populated country like uh, England there, there's never you're never too far from a, a large town um, certainly in the south of England so so you get this tend to get this type of glow anyway um, so we're putting a southern hemisphere sky in a northern hemisphere picture so uh, all all for a bit of fun um, if anybody knows their astronomy quite often, uh, they will notice that when you when you post an image, so, which is quite interesting because I'm I'm not one for trying to hide the fact that I do sky replacements or uh, I adapt my images. Um, I take photographs and turn them into uh, my view into into art pictures that uh, I enjoy to look at, and I hope other people enjoy to look at as well. So, so um, so now we're into this. We've got the sky that's been put in in raw. Effectively, it's it's there. You can see there's quite a lot of halo around the branches of the trees. If I zoom in there, you can see it, it, it's not perfect. So what, what, we, uh, what we need to do is start looking at the sliders to see if we can improve this. And the first thing I always do is get rid of the horizon blending. The horizon blending, sometimes if I bring it up higher, you'll see that it, it, it tends to give um, more of a sort of blend between the, the subject area and the sky. And sometimes that works if you've got distant hills that are fading away in the mist into the distance, then you can fade fade the sky into that as well. That works quite well. But in this case, we want quite a strong, strong, strong sky there. We can also use the sliders down here, sky local and, and close gaps to try to close this out. So I'm going to bring sky local up um, and uh, hopefully that will improve things just a little bit. Looking over there, we need a bit more there. And I'm going to close gaps. I'm just going to bring that to the left um, and see and you can see there that it's starting to move down into those areas. It's still not perfect over here. Um, so I'm now going to try the sky local a little bit more. See if that helps. It doesn't really. So I'm going to go to the sky global. 
which is the, the whole image and see if we can move them there we go did you see that how that that just worked its way into there beautifully i'll take that back to where we were so you can see if i if i if i make it even worse you can see here you've got these dark patches in the sky on the right hand side and it and there's no sky being put in behind here and over here on the left hand side you'll see there's no there's no sky in that area there and if i move sky global over to the right at 70 percent you'll see that it works its way into there really exceptionally good little slider if you go too far you you can end up with a, a little bit of a sort of sharp edge and sometimes it, it doesn't look particularly good but in this case actually it's still working quite well it's come down to the horizon on the trees there in the distance I'm just going to back it off just a little bit so that's good so um, you've also got a number of other sliders here you can click the flip sky and move it from one side to another if you want to actually I prefer it on the on the right there um, and you can add some atmospheric haze if you want to as well so you can just break the sky up a little bit by by adding if you add a lot it, it becomes a quite hazy sky so I tend to be very gentle with atmospheric haze probably about 10 not too much um, and then you've got right at the bottom here you've got uh, sky temperature and sky exposure so we can change the color of the sky we can make it more more red as though you're getting more light pollution or we can back it off and have it more blue and i think a bluer sky looks better because it was a cold morning you see here the the frost on the grass it was probably around about minus one minus two degrees centigrade um so you know which is not late 20s fahrenheit so um so it's just want to try and keep that blue look about it so i'm just going to find where that is and i want this green in the sky to sort of match the green a little bit. If I go too far, as you can see, it gets purples and blues. So we want to just find that balance point, which I think is going to be about there, minus 56. And the exposure, we can make the sky brighter or darker. So I can bring the exposure down a little bit, or I can bring the exposure up. Now, you don't want to go up from where we are. It's quite bright, so I'm actually going to bring that down just a little bit as well to about minus 25, something like that. And the last slider I always use is the relight the scene. So it takes what the sky looks like and it applies it to the, the, the whole the whole image of the foreground. And you see if I move it over, because it's quite a dark image, then the whole thing gets darker here. And this is where we start to get the real day to night effect uh, is by using this relight slider. So you can see we pre-lit those areas. If we hadn't pre-lit those areas on the church, we'd just have a very inky black or very dark church, uh, and which would be quite difficult. So I'm just going to not that slide apologies the relight scene just going to try and find the balance point which i think is about there at 65. so i'm happy with that we've got the sky coming into the trees very well it looks natural it looks pretty good um i'm i'm going to accept that so i'm going to go over to apply top left corner i'm going to click apply so all i've used luminar for is it at four is to is just to do the sky replacement so i'm just going to go back into the light room and there we go we've got the uh the church back in there now so you'll see that it says edit edit tiff and that's because it was an edit from photoshop edit dot tiff and um because it was already an edit it's added another edit and sometimes i can end up with three or four edits if i'm going in and out of photoshop uh and luminar so I think we're getting close now. We've got a, a nice image of the church. We've got uh, the sky that's gone in very well. What we do, do need to do perhaps is a little bit of day to night now uh, just to really uh, bring bring the last parts of this alive. And so I'd like to light the windows and I want to try to simulate a light that's underneath the porch, the entranceway here. Um, so we'll start with the big window at the end here. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Let's go into 100. Um, just put that in the middle. I'm going to take a mask and a radial gradient, and I'm going to take a nice big radial gradient that covers the whole window. Now, often when people try to light windows, they put the radial gradient right in the middle, and that's wrong because if you think about the church here, where um, the light, the light fitting, the luminaire would be inside this church, well, it would be certainly would be uh, in line with the the roof hanging down. But it wouldn't be here. It would be back slightly over here. The, the first light would be back away. So we want to put the, the light coming from uh, from the light fitting a little bit over to the, 
to the left uh, to, sorry to the right there um, and what that will do is that will just give us the light uh, brighter over to this side rather than in the center so once we've done that we're going to take the exposure slider and put it all the way over to the right as bright as we can and we're also going to add uh, a little bit of color in there uh, so 30 on temperature and about 10 10 on the tint with a little bit of uh, magenta added there so I'm going to come in a little bit closer now so we're going to go to 200 and what I now need to do is remove the radial gradient from the areas where I don't want the light and this could be a little bit tricky because we've got some wonderful stonework here for the windows but we want the light coming through the windows we don't want the light coming through onto the, the brickwork it wouldn't be there so we'll start with the more difficult uh, with the easier part sorry by removing the light from around the outside so I'm going to do that by going we're in the, we're in the mask look here we are we're in the mask I'm going to subtract a brush I'm going to have the feather down at literally five percent very low and the flow at a hundred and because we're subtracting a brush we will remove when I paint the brush we will remove the radial gradient that we've put on so remember we only want the radial gradient on the windows we don't want it everywhere else but we need to blend the light closer to the windows but where we have a sharp edge where the light is would be coming from right to left out through these windows that means we'd have a sharp um, shadow along this edge for example but we wouldn't on this edge because the light from the window would be illuminating the stone here so so i'm going to do a, a sharp edge along here first so i'm going to go to the top i'm going to click once i'm going to hold down the shift key and click again and i've removed it but can you see i've left an ever so slight line which i didn't mean to do at the top but not at the bottom so i was in the right place at the bottom so i'm going to go back to the top just overhang that slightly hold the shift key again and click again and you can see that it puts another straight line up from the bottom there the windows at the bottom here will have light on them but um, so but I'm just going to go past here because the light wouldn't come around this corner so just going to go a little bit further down but this time I'm going to add a little bit of feather as I come off the bottom here apologies I was still coming all the way from the top just going to take that back there re-click here then add a little bit of feather and just take that off the bottom there so we've just got a little edge there which is which is feathered out so um, right and then I'm gonna go along the bottom here it's still using this little bit of feather I'm just gonna go along the bottom of this stonework because we will blend that stonework in a little bit I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna do the same up here as well on that edge just there I'm just gonna take that edge up to here so we would have a shadowed edge around that corner and then around the arch here now you can try to freehand the arch if you want to what I tend to do is I do little tangents using the shift click the shift click and just add a little tangent around around the edge because you because you've got a slight feather on you don't really notice um, you don't really notice the straight edges that you're you're doing so the same here just bring that round here so it's shift click shift click I don't like that bit there I'm just gonna darken that bit in there and the same through here I'm just gonna freehand that piece down through there right so we've got the outer edge of the window done so I'm just gonna zoom out and remove the rest of the uh, the rest of the light there perhaps that's a bit far let's go to uh, 50 percent maybe just a shade closer 66 percent there we go so I can I can now paint away I can in fact take the feather away the flow is still at 100 and as long as I don't go over the window I can just take that away I'm going to make the brush bigger and I'm just going to come in there and just stay within that shadow that I've already created and just work my way around so I'm click shift click click shift click shift click so as you can see I've removed most of it there if I hover over the mask you will see where I haven't been so that you know I've still got a bit to do around the outside there so I'm just going to grab a much bigger brush there and I'm just going to paint 
away the radial gradient all the way around. So all that we're left with now is the actual window itself. <coughs> okay. So now we need to do the detail. This is where it gets a little bit more tricky. So I'm going to come back in at 200%. It's going to move that. So we need to think about how we blend, how we blend the light, because it's not going to be completely black on the outer edges, um, but it will be very dark along the very ridges of these uh, um, pieces of stonework. And there will be certain places where it will be darker than others. So what I want to do is I'm just going to back the flow off to about 60%. Uh, stick with my 5% feather. Make a small brush. And I'm going to go in a bit closer again still. So I'm going to go to 300%. And I want to, I want to create a almost like a, a, a line around the edge. So I'm going with quite a small brush. You can see here it's quite a small brush. You see there on the right. So I'm just going to take that there and I'm going to freehand draw, which is rubbish. I'm going to do that again. So uh, just doing that. I'm just using a mouse and I'm just going to bring that around. It's still not very good. In fact, let's start again and use the shift click function just to get where we want to go with the line. So I'm just holding down the shift key and just working my way around this window here. That's it. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side there. So click, shift, click, shift, click. So this takes a little bit of time. And uh, you do need to sort of focus to make sure that you get your lines uh, as you want them. So I'm going to come up on the other side here on this one. Just bringing that around, following that line. So I'm just holding the shift key down all the time. So I'm effectively drawing lots of little little straight lines along these ridges. Now you might say, well, why why bother to put a a, a, a line along the edge uh, like this? But what it does is it it creates a degree of contrast. It breaks. It breaks the um, toning up a little bit as we start to blend the lower shades. It gives you this edge. It's almost like ladies do with them with their lipstick. They quite can sometimes you see that they put a, a darker line around the outside of their lips and then they infill the lips with a, a slightly different tone or brightness or even even the same. But it gives you this edge. It gives you contrast. It, it looks. It looks very, very good. And it's where the detail really comes from uh, when we do these things. So I'm just going to finish that there. I'm going to put along these edges here, just going to put uh, just going to put some contrast along those edges as well. So so I'm just just picking those up as we go th go through um, stained glass windows <clears throat> can be uh, can be hard work, I must admit. So I'm going to just freehand around there. And I'm going to do the same here. And I'm going to do the same here. Just going to bring that edge along there a little bit darker as well. There we go. So we need to do the same from here up, up here. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to go up there, click up there. Just going to go slightly to the left there to I've got that one. There's one here as well. So I'm just going to bring that down to the bottom and uh, click here. So click, shift, click. Yep. And then we will just paint those other edges in. And you'll see in a moment why we do this. It's um, It really works very, very well. So we'll just bring that in there. There's a couple of edges to the to the window here. So just just bringing that contrast 
show you that edge. I'm just going to click one from the top to the bottom there. Same thing. And uh, I think that looks quite good. I might even just put one between these as well. Just along that edge, just to finish that edge off. It's a little bit of concentration here as I go, so uh, let's go back up to the top there, just join between that. So we've got the inner edge of that arch well defined um, as we come round. There we go. Yep, quite like that. And I might even do this other, this outer arch here as well. So I'm just going to click there and work my way around this this outer arch. Now you've probably seen me do uh, day to night on windows before and I, I go around the window uh, frame itself and I also go to the, uh, um, the, 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 the dividers between the glass uh, just just to bring in that detail. Well, this is the same sort of thing and of course because it's a, because it's a stained glass window it, um, it has a lot more has a lot more detail on it so it can be sometimes it can be quite daunting you're looking at this thinking crikey I've got uh, I've got an awful lot to do here so you can see I just did a straight line down from there um, and uh, just going to blend that one across to there and that one is going to go up into there so I need to do the edge of the window here so I'm going to click at the top go down to the bottom and I'm going to just put a straight line they're going to come over to the right slightly just to make sure we get the edge of that there we go can you see that I've just taken that out there and the same here I'm going down to the bottom of this one and coming up to to here and there's a little bit there on the left so I'm just going to go over to the left slightly go back down to the bottom and just take that edge out so we've got that nice strong line crossing over there so yeah, I think we're ready to do some of the blending. Um, so what, what we're gonna do with the blending is, is we're going to uh, reduce the flow each time and to some degree we'll increase the feather. So I'm gonna bring the feather up to about 30% and I'm gonna decrease the flow down to 30% as well. So now we've got uh, quite a lot. If I make my brush bigger and just draw a line, you can see how that is gray. And if I go over once, it's gray. If I go over again, it gets darker. Go over again, it gets darker, 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 darker. Do you see that? So what, what, I'm just going to undo that. So the idea is, is we need to blend this light away. So it will be brightest nearest the window and it will be darkest closest to the lines we've drawn. So what I'm going to do is effectively, I can't cross over these lines and I also uh, can't go into the window. So I'm going to take a brush which is about half the size of this, this, um, this piece of glass here, maybe a little bit bigger. I'm going to click at the top but not going onto the glass. I'm going to click at the top once and I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to click again and shift click and I've started that process of darkening that area. I'm going to do the same on this side. Click once, come back up here and click again. Do you see how it just takes it down slightly? Just one pass for now because this is nearest to the light. Um, so we're just going to do that there as well. So these are the same up here. So I'm going to click and I'm just going to go right up through and just uh, just try and bring these down a little bit up through here that's not very good undo that by control Z there we go click shift click just bring that edge over I'm um, just going to darken that in there as well and then click shift click click shift click and then just darken that piece as well. So I just need to do round here. So I'm actually going to make a brush a little bit bigger this time so it covers both pieces here. And I'm going to start at the top with a click and just work my way around that line that we, we drew earlier just to start to blend these areas together. So I'm going to take quite a big brush this time but not go too far over to the right because we've already started that process of making that darker. I'm going to come down the bottom here and I'm just going to pass a couple of times. So I'm still holding the shift down as I'm passing up and down. I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller here. So click and then click, shift click. So we're just working our way away from the window. 
to get that sort of um, blended blended light so one more of those and you start to see it blends away so now the brush gets smaller and now we work our way on the line only so I'm going to start at the top here again and I'm going to go down to the bottom of the line I'm going to get brush smaller still click shift click and we have to blend to that black line is effectively what we have to do so I'm going to make the brush slightly smaller again and bear in mind we're still we haven't moved the the uh, feather or the flow but I'm just going back and forth to blend that edge just going to make the brush a little bit bigger again just to blend that edge a little brush So it should get to a point where we cannot see the contrast between that darker line that I drew originally. There we go. We're starting to get there now. Let's do that bit up there. We're starting to see that it blends. So you cannot see the line. And what that's now doing is, is effectively giving us a light to dark, light to dark. You can see that. So same over here. I'm going to take a slightly bigger brush. We'll do the whole thing in one go. Click there. Click there. Smaller brush. Effectively smaller brush still. And I'm going to come down one more size of brush. There we go. Just going alongside that black, that darker line. And I'm just blending that in. So I'm just going to take that up as well. So it does take a little bit of time. You've got to work your way around the edges and just take away some of that, that darkness each time. Find the contrast between the dark line and the brighter and the brighter area. And um, and you just gotta make sure that you don't have any hard edges between the blends this is the real the real key to it it's uh, it's quite tricky to do um, but you've basically just got to find your way with these darker edges and um, I'm just blending them in so I've sort of shown you the process I'm just going to speed things up a little bit so I can actually move this forward I'm just going to blend Group blend some of these areas in. Just do this window here as well. Just do that edge there. And what you start to see is is it's a lovely effect. It really does start to show uh, almost as though you're painting with the light. I think that's the that's the important factor to consider. And uh, it just takes a little bit of time just to to get what you need done, just to blend those edges in. You see how they just those lines are just starting to disappear as we blend them. Yep, I'm just uh, what I'll do is I'm just going to speed up the video so you don't have to watch me do all of these all of these edges and then. Um, and I'll come back to you, come back to you shortly.
Okay, so I'm just going to finish off this windowsill at the end here. And one of the things I wanted to show you is how the light will come out from inside the church. It will it will leave shadows where these window piers are. So what we need to do um, is have reasonably good feather, 40, 45 percent, something like that. A little bit more flow, about 50 percent. And bear in mind the light is up here. OK, so we need a shadow that sort of mimics that. So I think what, what we're going to do is we're going to start off that dark part there. We're going to uh, click once and then shift click just to just to bring that straight line. And we're just going to build those up just to create a shadow. Do you see that? So um, just going to click shift click just to build up a little bit of shadow there. This bottom edge is going to be much darker, so I'm just going to run back and forth across there a little bit more just to bring that in and then you see the shadows come across this sort of work quite well lit area and that would be quite well lit so so what we've now got if I zoom back to a hundred percent you'll now see that we've we've painted that in in fact a couple of areas there are still a little bit bright just going to go back into that top bit there and just just going to go over those just to bring those down just a little bit um, they're quite bright uh, so still using this same one there I'm just going to take this one here one more time just to bring it down just reduce that flow slightly just to capture this one there we go so I think that looks that looks a little bit more realistic yeah there we go I'm quite happy with that so you can see how much light is coming onto these edges so <clears throat> so let's just zoom back to the main point and you think well that doesn't look that doesn't look like it's really illuminated but now now we've done all that work we've effectively created the mask as you can see that's the bit that we want and we're at a hundred percent on exposure can't go any more on exposure but what we can do is we can right click duplicate the mask so now we've got two masks so effectively effectively we've got exposure exposure instead of being just four we've actually got eight We've got two lots of light on there. And now you can start to see that effort that we made to put all those edges in. We've got shadows and we've got blendings and you can see that the arch itself is sort of lit, lit up. And those those um, shadows from the window piers look really good. In fact, this is a bit a bit too bright. So what, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Um, just take this top um, one that we've done here and I'm just going to back that down just a little bit. There we go. And and so we've got four plus 2.3 as you can see there. And come down a little bit more or a little bit more, and, and make it just the right brightness that I want to use. So now we've got the window to the right brightness. Um, we can also adjust it later if we feel we need to. We do need to put some light outside here on the grass. This 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 window would cast quite a lot of light here. So I'm going to go to create a new mask again. I'm going to select radial gradient. I'm going to pull out a radial gradient on the grass here. Now, if I just have it straight like this, it, it, that isn't the direction the light's coming from. You can see the light as we wanted it was off to the right here. So it's coming down and it's coming out at the window angle so we need to alter this to be the same roughly as the angle of the light to the window shadow you'll see roughly like that and the majority of the light's going to be here this this area here is where that light is going to shine down it's going to be about here so we want that to uh, to come through I'm just going to pull that out a little bit further because the light will come out quite a way and I'm just going to make it a little bit wider we can always change it and then I'm going to go to the exposure and I'm going to bring the exposure up slowly so you can see this light coming from that window. Yeah? In fact, it's going to come this way a little bit just to make it perfectly correct. We're going to add some colour so it matches the colour of the light inside the church. So we're just going to turn the temp up a little bit. And it's very green, so we do need to compensate green with magenta just, just to bring that sort of colour feel through. Now that's quite bright and also... It's lighting up the side of the church here, which, of course, there would be a shadow from that window down here. So we're going to subtract a brush. We're going to go with 100% flow. We want to remove everything and we want no feather. It's a really tight edge. And it's going to come across level with that window. So it's going to come across here. So I'm going to start outside here, click once, and I'm going to come across, hold down the shift and click again. 
So you create this rather hard line there, you can see that. And I'm just going to, there, going to remove the rest of the, uh, the, 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 uh, thing, the radial gradient over here and over here, just to, to bring that around there, just going to soften that corner there slightly. So it's created quite a hard edge, okay? But now we just need to blend that edge out. So we can do that by adding in 50% feather, 50% flow. And then we're just going to take a smaller brush and we're just going to run along that edge as such. Just pass over a few times. And then I'm just going to do a couple of straight passes with that just to break, just to break that edge up. You see how we just breaking that edge. So you've got this dark shadow area here and yet you've got this light coming from the window. It is a little bit bright, so I'm just going to back it off slightly. There we go. So we've got the light coming out the window. Now there are, there are a couple of other windows on the side of this building, predominantly this one over here. So we will need to do the same with these windows. Um, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to create a new mask. We're going to grab a radial gradient. We're going to take a small one and we're just going to put it just off to the side because we want the light coming from this direction now. So I'm just going to pop that in there. I'm going to bring up the brightness to 100%. There we go. And then we're going to jump in nice and close and do the same as we did previously. We're going to take, um, subtract a brush and have a little bit, a tiny bit of 5% feather, 100% on the flow. We're going to get in there and we are going to just take that edge there. Just cover that a little bit there. And then we're just we're going to take that edge round. So it's quite a hard edge out here because we've got a, a quite a strong, um, quite a strong shadow that would be cast from this little window. Make my brush bigger. I'm just going to go around there, and um, using the shift key to do the straight lines, as I've shown you already, you can work your way around. A bigger brush there just to get the rest of it. And I'll have a look in a minute to see if we've got everything. Now, with this edge is nice and sharp here. This one needs to be blended as we've done previously. So we're going to bring the feather up. We're going to bring the flow down. We're going to take a smaller brush. And we are going to work our way around this edge. Just doing a few passes. Just to bring that down. So we break that edge up. So the light is effectively softened around that edge. I'm just going to add a little bit here as well, just on this edge here. Just to soften those edges down a little bit. Can you see how we try to take that sharp edge away and create this sort of blending of the light as it comes down there? It works very, very well. Gives you a really nice effect. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before. Oh, just before I do, I'm going to zoom out. Make sure we've got all of the, uh, there's some little bits left there, as you can see. We need to just get rid of those. So inside the brush, we turn the flow back up to maximum. Take a big brush and just go around and make sure we've got everything. There we go. So we're going to do the same as we did before. We're going to right click, duplicate the mask. So we've got much brighter. Then we're going to back, back that one off. We're just going to add a bit of color to it just so it matches the light over here. A little bit of magenta as well. There we go. We get a similar level of brightness. So I'm going to make that a little bit darker. There we go. And uh, and you can see that works very, very well. So we need to do the same, the same for this one and this one, this window here. Now these two we can do together because we can almost show that light is coming from, from a different area. So same thing, I'm going to create a mask take a radial gradient, take quite a large radial gradient this time, put the light as though it's up above one of the windows here, I'm going to put it there, and then I'm going to bring the brightness up to maximum, add some colour, add some magenta, and then we're going to, we're going to do our normal subtract the brush, we're going to zoom in, so we're nice and close, and we're going to do the same again. So we're going to take quite a low feather. Um, we're going to take 100% flow so we can get rid of the majority of the darker areas. So I'm just going to take a couple of bites of this along the edge because it's not straight, this, this brickwork here. Just going to uh, 
take a, an edge there and I'm just going to run one along the bottom so we've got a little bit of a window seal there as you can see and then I'm going to bring this out to here nice straight edge down there and then over the top of the arch that is our full shadow yeah and then around this window the lights going to go be going from left to right this time so we can have a nice sharp edge down this edge here there we go and I'm going to take a nice sharp edge across the top of this arch so using the click shift click way of working I can get that nice sharp edge over the top there and I'm going to bring it down the other side of the arch here as well there we go like so and then we're going to have a relatively sharp edge along here so I'm just going to bring that brush in there um, and click shift click along that edge now along this windowsill I'm just going to go along the bottom for now we'll come back to that in a while just to get the rest of that sorted um, and now we need to remove everything else that's not within the window so we can just uh, just start painting around and um, make sure we get that bit down the middle there let's come out of the way and I'm just going to zoom out once I've got the, the majority of it there we go I'm going to zoom out to 100% and we're just going to remove the rest of it without going over the window now if you do accidentally go oh, over the window or oh, bugger you know that's no good you can just command or control Z to go back one to where you were and then carry on so we're still in this subtraction of the brush and I'm just going to go around there hold over the top there you can see there's a little bit at the bottom a little bit at the top so we just need to make sure we've got rid of those I'm just going to make sure we've got all of that sorted that's good and then we just need to do our blending as we did previously they're smaller windows so they won't take too long uh, I'm going to go to uh, roughly 50 50% 50 flow a little bit more feather there smaller brush and I'm just going to work my way around those edges like we've been doing and just basically blending those edges in same with the windowsill here just going to take that sharp edge away from there and just blend across lovely and a little bit down this edge just to pick up the detail there. so that one's good I'm just going to take a little bit over the edge of this sharp edge that I've done because we just want to blend that so it's not too sharp an edge and I just want to bring that windowsill round and blend that windowsill there we go now this side we will have some blending to do so I'm just going to do the same here click and then just bring that blending in um, and then you've got some detail here so small brush just running those lines that wasn't very good try again there we go so just free handing that in we've got a little bit of detail there so I just want to bring that detail in because that detail as you saw previously it does it does stand out and then what we can do is we can soften it all with a, a slightly bigger brush just to soften those edges in it's quite coarse that brush it's quite strong so I'm just going to be careful and I'm just dark just taking a smaller brush just to get that darker line along that edge like we did previously there we go um, so effectively we're just working our way around to get that contrast into the shot so it's quite dark through there I'm quite happy with that it's darkening that center area a little bit more and I think that's going to work quite well so again we're going to right click we're going to duplicate the mask to make it super bright uh, we're going to uh, I'm going to take a little bit of noise out on this one whilst we're here because we're still in the um, We're still in the the brush here I'm just going to go down to noise and just take a little bit of noise out Can you see I'll just bring the noise up and I'm also going to just add a little bit of clarity See how that sort of makes it work very well. That's very bright over here. It's not so bright over here um, This is the second one we've put on top so we can bring that down a little bit I do need to bring the brightness down on this one. So still inside that brush 
I can just take uh, a minus brush across the top until it brings it down a little bit more color until it brings it down to a brightness that's similar to this window. Can you see how we're doing that? Just by adding a little bit of blending on top that brings that brightness down and it works quite well. Just need a shadow over here so I'm just going to pop that in there and just build up a little bit of a shadow by right clicking left and right using the uh, using the shift key to just build up that line. You can see there, there we go. We've got a little bit of a shadow in there as well. A little bit around the top there is a bit bright, so I make my brush a little bit smaller. And just take that back and forth a little bit, just to soften that edge. There we go. I'm I'm happy with that. I'm just going to zoom out. Just see what it looks like as a as a whole. So, um, yeah, that's not too bad at all. It might be just a little bit bright, so I can just bring that back a little bit. And then we just want a bit of light on the ground. In fact, that one's a little bit bright as well. I'm just going to bring it back as well. And then we're going to need to put a little bit of light on the ground here. So we're going to go back to the create a new mask, go back to radial gradient. We're going to take a little narrow piece of light where that light comes down it's going to be down here on the ground and then we just need to get the direction correct add a little bit of brightness there you can see how that just lights up nicely there just needs to come this way a little bit add a little bit of color to it a bit magenta to it there we go it's a bit bright just back it off just a little bit that's good and make it just a little bit wider and just a little bit longer and then I'm going to subtract a brush. I'm going to have uh, a shadow as we did previously. So we've got a nice shadow there. Might even bring that shadow out just a little bit further. There we go. I want to do the same over here. So I would copy this one, but because I've been painting with this brush, it will uh, it will affect the mask but what I can do is instead of taking the mask I can take the radial gradient so we've got all the settings on the radial gradient the same and I can put those over here and what I will do is make this one a little bit wider so it takes both windows into account I can make that just a shade brighter because there's two windows so you get a little bit more light I'm going to do the same thing here um, I'm going to subtract the uh, the brush I'm just going to take that that out of there so you've got a little bit of a shadow there coming in it's a bit orange this one compared so I'm just going to back the orange off just a little bit um, bring back that so it doesn't not quite so bright and as you look at these things as you as you start to feel them they are a little bit bright this one in fact this one's quite bright over here I'm just going to back him off as well so um and all that leaves us with really is uh is the porch so how to do the porch well let's zoom in a little bit on the porch here um in fact that one's still looking a little bit blurry there i'm just gonna back that noise that noise off just a little bit um and just see if i can build the build a little bit more detail in there maybe bring the sharpness up just to make it pop a little bit more. It's a bit fuzzy, but that's okay. So in the porch, there may be a light under here, under the front part of this roof. So we create a radial gradient, okay? Quite a decent size one like that. And we put the radial gradient up where the light bulb would be. And then we bring up the brightness, as we always do, as you can see, nice and bright. And then we're going, this time, we're going to cut it away from where it wouldn't be. So it wouldn't be over here. It wouldn't be up here. It wouldn't be on the outside of this here. So we need to just just do the same as we normally do. So I'm just going to come in at 300%. I'm going to subtract a brush. Um, and we've got a little bit of feather, 10%, just to bring this edge along here. I'm just going to click, shift, click. Uh, same down this side. Click, shift, click. So that's all the things that would not be illuminated. So we got up there. So... Um, 
and then of course up down here none of this over here will be illuminated only this so we're going to take a small brush just to go along the edge and we will come in there and we will click shift click and just come around those edges there and then same here click down there and then along that wall because that would be illuminated and uh, along that edge there not nice sharp edge because it would be a sharp edge that the in the distance there would be dark and um, so just doing that there um, we wouldn't have so much light around the corner here but we'll blend that away as we go um, so I'm just gonna make the brush bigger here and just come in and uh, take out uh, the stuff over further away I don't want to go too far down because I want to blend this light out at the bottom um, so I'm just gonna drop the flow back bring the feather up and then just just try to to blend that away at the bottom here so that you don't see the join um, and same here I'm going to just take this corner here and just make that a little bit darker and as you go away it will get darker as we go away from it so um, just going to move down so I hold the shift key to move down and I'm just blending that away from that area there good so let's go back to no feather 100% flow let's zoom out just to finish off the uh, the area around this porch so we'll just do that here we go let's trump in on that a little bit there there we go so again if you hover over you can see where you've been and where you've not been so we just need to get rid of that little bit there and we need to get rid of the bits over here so keep looking keep seeing where you haven't been hold your just hover your mouse over the mask that shows you where you haven't been and it shows you where you are so as you can see we're just in that porch area so do as we did last time I'm just going to add some color to that and I'm just going to right click duplicate the mask so we get the brightness that we wanted but of course it's way too bright just going to bring some noise reduction in on that and a little bit of sharpening and a little bit of clarity and I'm just going to back that down so it's not overly bright so just a little bit too much color there back that off just a little bit it's nice I'm going to zoom back in and I'm just going to soften these edges you see this edge here is really sharp you see how sharp that edge is so to do that I go back to the brush that was related to this I introduce 50% flow 50% uh, feather and what I do is I, I working from the outside which is maximum um, shadow and just draw along these lines a little bit just hit these edges just overlapping slightly the uh, the area and what you will see is is that you will just soften in just soften that edge ever so gently so uh, softening that edge there and then I'm going to click shift click just to break that edge up a little bit more we're we looking yeah it's looking good it's just softening that edge off because it was it was really really uh, abrupt and let's zoom back out now we are zoomed so close and we are trying to add a lot of detail to an area which is uh, you know quite small in the image so don't worry too much about the noise when you get in quite close I'm just backing off that that brightness just a little bit more there we go and the last thing we need to do is put some light in over here so I can go back to the to this one here and right click and duplicate the radial and then take that radial over here just direct it so it's going in the right direction for the for the light from the porch and um, that works quite well and then I can just take this piece out on the on the, the, the remainder of that so I'm going to subtract a brush uh, I'm going to go 50 50 roughly and I'm just going to take that bit away over here that's it and I think we're pretty close to uh, finishing this one off so 
It's going to come out of the mask in a second. I'm quite happy with that. Um, still think this might be a little bit bright, so we can always go back into masks. We can click on that, and uh, also I see that there's a, um, an area on the wall there that's a bit bright, so we can go into one of the brushes and just remove that there. Just bring that down a little bit darker. There we go. Um, so let's just bring this one down just a little bit. So we're just going to bring that down a little bit more. There we go. And it actually brings all of them because we copied the uh, because we copied the radial. We can we can vary them all. That's quite nice there. I quite like this bright one out here because such a big window. It does it does look quite good. So just going to come out the masks. I'm going to do some final adjustments here. We can we can we can move the highlights up or down. That actually gives us. A little bit more to the sky, a little bit less to the sky. Um, so we can we can find somewhere nice there. Add a little bit more warmth to the image, maybe a little bit more magenta. Not too much, or oh, too much warmth. Let's just return those back by double clicking on temp and 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 uh, and tint. Just a little bit is what we need. Not a lot. Um, in fact, you know, I don't even think we need to bring that temperature up. As I said earlier, we are looking for that coolness in there so I might even come down slightly just to maintain that coolness in there it's pretty good I'm just going to add a bit of vibrance so it pops a little bit that's nice and I'm going to add some clarity just to try because we've got so much uh, so much dynamics going on with the light if we add more clarity we we get a, a deeper effect if we have less we get a softer effect um, and actually you know the softness works really really well so I'm actually going to back the clarity off to about 10 minus 10 there Gonna add a little bit of texture just so the church stonework doesn't lose that softness and then i'm going to go down to finish off here i'm going to go down to effects i'm going to bring in a a, a, a post crop vignette quite a big one about 30 35 there 36 and then i'm just going to feather it out to 100 just to build that out and then my last touch is really i just want to find where we are with the exposure a little bit brighter a little bit of contrast yeah and i'm just going to check my whites by holding down the optional alt key you can see that that we've got uh, where we want to be i think about plus 10 there seems to work quite well and the blacks just bring them down so we're biting a little bit of black just ever so slightly not too much there minus one and uh, I think, just checking the brightness. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. So hopefully you enjoyed that. It was uh, a day to night sky replacement on a nice frosty morning church. Um, I, I quite enjoy. It. I'm just gonna bring that. Can't resist. I'm just gonna bring the uh, saturation back a little bit. So uh, it, it it does look uh, does look quite good. So uh, Utterling Church taken from a. A day to a night, we've got a nice starry sky. If you enjoyed that, please like the video. Um, and uh, I'd love you to follow my adventure here on YouTube. So it would be great if you subscribed. And uh, until the next video, um, yeah, feel free to put comments in, in, the, uh, in below. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.